for being here today. Um, sorry for the delay. We're just trying to get some uh, connections set up so that we can live stream today's event to Brownsville. Um, but again, thank you. We're glad that you're here to listen to the insight that some of our students with disabilities here at the university have joined us today to share. We're going to be um, talking about their experiences as a college student and a person with disabilities. And um, I know that they have some very valuable information that they're going to be sharing today. Our host, I would like to uh, introduce Dr. Sean Saladin. He is the Associate Vice President for Faculty in the Division of Health Affairs. It's a long title. Uh, he's also an advocate for students and all persons with disabilities, especially here at the university. So it's very fitting that he's our host today, so please help me welcome Dr. Saladin. Hello, welcome, thank you. Thank you, and um, it's always a pleasure when we can hear from this program. You think, uh, from the standpoint, the university is always trying to improve services, student success, and, and build on what we learn and take it forward. But the, but the focus is always on student success. So I'm honored to be here learning about what's happening with the rubber meets the road. Our students in college, what we can do to help them be more successful. I passed them, passed out four questions to them, and I gotta give you a warning, I gotta be out of here at 1245. I gotta meet with the president on some other things, okay? Student success. I'll tell them about this. If I'm late, I'm definitely gonna tell them about this. Help us do the show. So um, I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves one at a time. They're going to uh, talk about some of their successes they've achieved so far. I need the mic. I would just got the sign. I need the mic, and that's like to tell you a little bit about my disability. Is I'm late deafened, and I never know quite how loud I am. So evidently, I'm not loud enough. So here we are. So. Uh, Going to ask them to introduce themselves briefly, uh, talk about their student, uh, some successes that they've received so uh, achieved so far, and then um, things that we could improve upon, and finish it off with their tenure employment goals. My background is vocational rehabilitation, and I would not do my field justice if I didn't ask you, what do you want to do for a living? Okay. So let's go on down the line. I'm going to pass the mic first to Brittany. I'm down. Just uh, please introduce yourself and say just a little bit about yourself, okay? Um, my name is Brittany Hurtado. I'm a deaf student here at UTRGV. Um, I'm a junior. My major is Rehabilitation Services with a focus on deaf studies. Um, I have an associate's degree <laughs> from STC in deaf support services, so I'm planning on continuing my education to finish my bachelor's degree. Hi everyone, thank you so much for having me here today. My name is Solange Nuere. I'm a graduate student with a political science uh, graduate uh, program, it's very new. I got my uh, bachelor's here as well in political science, so I'm super excited to be back here continuing my education. I, uh, <laughs> I this um, office and this group has worked with me um, given that I have a visual disability and require a little bit more time than uh, uh, regular students to you know, produce quality work. So I'm very much appreciative of the chance to be here. Hello, my name is Valeria Lopez and I'm an undergraduate junior with a major in psychology and a minor in rehabilitation and my disability is cerebral palsy. Uh, Hello, I'm Jeremy Schmatz and my, um, con er, my major is Computer Science with a Concentration in Cybersecurity, and I'm a junior. And my um, disability is dystonia or involuntary muscle contractions on my right side as a result of two brain surgeries to move a brain tumor when I was eight. 
as results from uh, from going, for, I have to write with my left hand as results of it being my left side of the brain because I was right-handed when I was, well, when I was born. <laughs> Thank you all. So the next next question on down the line is, can you um, describe some of your successes as a college student? When I entered college, I was very apprehensive and very nervous about the experiences that I would have. Um, I didn't know any sign language. I didn't have an interpreter with me. I barely had hearing aids. Um, my first semester was very difficult, it was very challenging. I couldn't keep up with any of the lectures happening. I missed due dates, I missed the conversations and questions being asked in class, and it was honestly a really scary time for me. And my first semester, I ended up meeting a professor here that also teaches at STC. Her name was Javon Delgado, and she really encouraged me to be very proud of who I am, be very proud of my disability, she encouraged me to learn sign language and up to the point where I could have an interpreter sit with me in different events and in the classroom and make everything a lot more easier for me. Um, I transferred to STC in order to get a better feel for the college experience and I flourished there with their help. And when I transferred back to URTRGV this semester, I was very nervous, very apprehensive, but because of the different accommodations I've had, because of the help that certain professors have given me and the guidance that I've had, um, meeting with Dr. Saladin helped me reassure myself that I would do very well here at UTRGB and I'm very proud to say so far I have all A's back at the university and everything is just amazing for me now. So I'm uh, originally from Miranda, East Africa. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of it, it's a very tiny country, uh, pretty much unknown feels like. Um, uh, when I arrived here in the US, I was 18 years old, 2012. Uh, prior to that, I had never owned a telephone. I had never used a computer. So technology, I was never exposed to technology, really. So um, when I got here, I could not speak a word of English as well. And at 18 years old, I was behind a lot of students due to the fact that uh, the educational systems are completely uh, different. The culture was different as well. So it was a lot of uh, a mix of a lot of things going on here. Uh, not only adjusting to the new climate and trying to learn a new language, I had to do a lot of my work on computer. So my eyes, I guess, had never been exposed to a uh, constant use of uh, computer and technology. So um, I started seeing different things and just could not understand why words were moving or so on. I decided to see, or teachers uh, encouraged me to see uh, my eye doctor who did discover that I have a conversion deficiency, which means I just, uh, have very weak eye muscles, which requires me to take, you know, uh, a lot of breaks in between of my works, which is we have deadlines with assignments, so that wasn't going to work very well for me. So my, prof uh, my eye doctor did uh, suggest I don't study political science because that required a lot of work and a lot of reading everything my uh, <laughs> deficiency or my um, visual disability uh, is against. I told him no, so I continued working with the disability office. They made these accommodations for me. Uh, my professors worked with me. Had it not been for them, I really would not have successfully uh, finished my graduate, uh, my college um, degree and gone on to graduate school. So it's very, very amazing uh, what y'all do um, because I completely be in a different space. So thank you very much. When I came to UTRGV, um, I was kind of scared. 
because it was a lot bigger than high school and I didn't know anyone. But it was a good experience for me because like with the Student and Video Services, they helped me a lot. Because of them, I was able to succeed my first semester and I got the Dean's List and the second semester, I ended up getting the President's List, all A's, which really shocked me. I was like, because of student exhibit courses and because of the accommodations they give me, the extended time, and all my professors that helped me, I was able to achieve my, like, get all A's, you know, achieve my goals. And so far, I've, I've gotten the Dean's List again, so I'm doing pretty good. Well, because of switching from right hand to left hand, I'm not the best writer, and also because of my two brain surgeries, I've also had some epilepsy, so that, well, not the full-blown seizures, but some opsance seizures, so just where I kind of black out for a second, so I just had to kind of, it kind of, like a reset my brain for a couple minutes. And so I've had to, um, on test, basically just had to have some extra time taking them, but with the, with the, with the um, testing center, that's great because I, I've had more time to do it and I've had A's and B's overall so that's great so i feel great to do it okay the next question will focus on to we'll build on the strengths that you just described so what um what you're around students faculty staff day in day out when you're you're here what are some of the things that you'd want the rest of the, the world, if you will, because we're videoing this and I'm sure it's going to go viral, to know um, what makes you more successful specifically, what makes you more successful is, um, as a student here. We'll pass the mic again. Being a deaf student at UTRGV, my needs are probably a lot different than other people with disabilities. I do require special apl um, amplification systems depending on the classrooms. I, my hearing aids really don't work in lecture halls, so I try to stay away from those. Interpreters are probably my best friend at UTRGV. <laughs> They're my main source of communication. They're amazing at what they do. I know it's very hard <laughs> to try to keep up because I don't do traditional ASL. I use transliterating, which is more English-based than a regular form of ASL. Um, but I'm really grateful for the interpreters that I have, and so far they've done an amazing job. Um, I'm also really thankful for some of the professors that I have that are really understanding of being deaf and the deaf community in general. I've had some professors that are really not understanding and will ask weird questions like, oh, do you have hearing aids? And like try to look at my ears, and it's kind of weird. Um, but I, I love the professors that just completely treat me like a normal student and don't try to label me for my disability. Um, they give me the same opportunities as everybody else. They hold me to the same standards as everybody else. And I feel like that really does help push me for my success in the classroom because I don't feel limited um, as in certain classrooms. Um, there are some challenges that may come with it, like interaction-wise. I notice a lot of students are very apprehensive to approach me. I don't know if they think I'm contagious or something. <laughs> but they're really scared to talk to me. That can make it a little hard. But it, Usually when I'm able to flourish in an environment with its different teachers and the interpreters that truly understand what it's like and under have some sense of deaf culture and the deaf community, I find that those are the classes that I can be really successful in because I can feel like myself and I don't really feel as intimidated or timid to want to participate in class and I'm not really holding back with the things that I can and can't do. And, I mean, so far, everything's been really great transferring back to UTRGV, and I definitely think the faculty and staff are a huge help, especially everybody in the student accessibility department and helping me with my accommodations and my services and always making sure I have an interpreter there. Um, it hasn't failed so far. I always have an interpreter there, and that's amazing because I've had some instances where interpreters never show up. <laughs> so it's a really 
great thing to know that I had the support behind me in order to help me succeed. So would you say, have your interpreters been there through each class every time you needed them? Yes. Yeah, okay, well, that's good. We're moving on. All right. So given that, well, some of us need a little bit more time to just uh, produce as a um, quality work as everybody else. I do, um, I did succeed, succeed in undergraduate, uh, did get really good grades and uh, a lot of the faculty and the disability office team really did help with accommodations and ensuring that some of the professors who are not as uh, open to uh, ensuring that we get more uh, time as necessary. Just uh, referring back to the accommodations and letting them know, hey, um, you know, I'm just going to be producing a quality <coughs> work. I just need a little bit more time uh, than usual. So it's really been helpful in that instance, the, in that uh, also interacting with the professors and letting them know, hey, this is uh, what I can contribute and Showing, I've, I've shown so far that, uh, you know, I'm just as uh, capable of producing a quality work as everybody else. So they just so far uh, have been able to accommodate my um, disability and just giving me like one more day to ensure that I reach my goals. And it's been very helpful. And once again, I'm very, very uh, grateful to have been gotten the assistance I've been receiving in an effort to be getting good grades uh, in my graduate school as well, because that also uh, opens a lot of doors, like receiving scholarships due to those good grades, just because a professor gave you that one more day or that extra hour than everybody else. So, so far I've been uh, successful because of all these assistance from the college, the faculty. It's, it's pretty amazing that um, universities do this. And it's, n it's not only about, uh, uh, you know, offering the accommodations. Like, I do appreciate that. You, you follow up and I come and check in with you and it's just like the kind of report and uh, ensuring that we're comfortable and you know just making sure that uh, we can come to you if anything changed so we can keep thriving and uh, you know doing us good in school so it's I, I really feel like of a, it's kind of a community, so it's it's pretty amazing. All the professors that I've had so far have been, or most of the professors have been understanding of my disability and have given me excellent time for tests and quizzes, which really helps. And what really helped me when I started the second semester of my freshman year was a note taker. That was like the best because I, I, I write really slow because of my, like my hands. And like the professor could be like showing a PowerPoint and I could be like barely writing like the first two sentences and then like they just move on, you know? And I'm like, I was writing that. I'm like, that's not fair. And I, I can't do anything. So the note taker really helps. Well, sometimes. Sometimes the note takers, like for one of my classes last semester, I had a note taker or two note takers. <laughs> they split it between themselves and they took my notes, but all of a sudden, like around February, they just stopped. So I, I had to ask someone else to send me their notes. <laughs> but those notes help too. And the audio recorder, the audio recorder, it helps, but it kind of puts me to sleep. Like I'm listening to it. And within 10 minutes, I'm already asleep. <laughs> but it does help a lot. 
It, hello. Okay. All right. The thing that really helps with me is whenever I'm like a PowerPoint is the professor emails it to me usually or a, or a friend takes notes and they send me a picture or they um, or I, I just take a picture when the class is over but sometimes there is that one professor or two that I I ask them um, can I see can I see the notes and he or she's like no which is kind of okay <laughs> so I I'm I make sure to never take that professor again <laughs> but it's it's that one in a hundred professors so this is a great campus it really is interesting to talk about the note-taking because uh, that's one of the accommodations I had in uh, back in like in 82 83 84 somewhere around there okay so some of the things still still the same and I'm with you the audio recordings put me to sleep I almost fell asleep driving because my wife was reading to me she, she likes to read um, magazines she's like a magazine queen so she's reading something out of National Geographic or historian or whatever and uh, I fell asleep at the wheel, so we had to stop. Go on, so I understand. All right, so y'all probably figured out by now that they're they're not a very shy group. Okay, so from we we can't really say this is a random sample of the population because these are the students who volunteer. These are the students who are making A's. These are the students doing great. So with that in, in mind, and I was one of the students that did make the A's and so forth but what would you do or say what do you do to encourage other students with disabilities to seek the services and get and stand up for their rights and we'll pass the mic As i know personally in that statistic wise not a lot of deaf people in general try to pursue higher educations or really finish trying to pursue a higher education and I personally know what that feels like because I thought at one point in time I wouldn't be able to handle college. I honestly felt like I had to drop out or take something online because it was just way too difficult and it was way before I had any accommodation or the right accommodation for me or any resources before I knew of any outside programs that would really help me and I think it's always best for people to understand and to know that the rights that they have as someone with disability as well as the different resources that are out there for the community because I know CAG isn't really established anymore but CAG was one of my main advocates being a student um, as well as DARS which is now Texas Workforce Solutions um, they're also one of the best <laughs> resources that I had as a deaf student um, as far as providing me the different technologies that I needed in order to succeed. But I personally would encourage anybody to pursue the higher education and try to push past that little bump in the road that you have where it feels like you're stuck, where you feel defeated, where you feel like you can't do it anymore because, I'm sorry, <laughs> because it's really, once you push past that little breaking point for you, like the opportunities are endless and you feel so much more accomplished showing like hey I can do this and I felt defeated at one point in time I have a twin who's hearing that's getting ready to go to medical school I saw him living his life and succeeding and getting all A's and doing all these like amazing things while I was stuck struggling and I felt like I should be there with him I should be able to do the same things he's doing why should I gonna let my disability stopped me and with those different resources and the different resource programs that I had it really helped motivate me and push me in order to get to where I am today and honestly I can say if I didn't lose my hearing and if I wasn't deaf I probably wouldn't have the same drive and passion and motivation that I have today so it's kind of a blessing in disguise I guess you can say but definitely I would encourage anybody who feels stuck 
um, because of their disability and not to give up and just try to push past it and find the right resources and find the different accommodations that work for you because not everybody's the same. Everybody's gonna have different accommodations just because something works for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for somebody else. Um, an interpreter might have not worked for me. I could have used a cart service which would cl closed caption everything that somebody would be saying. Everybody's needs are different. So I would just really push to try to find the right things for you and also make sure you utilize the outside resources that are there for the community. You know what Brittany said, uh, had I listened to my uh, eye doctor who, said, who says that uh, my uh, visual disability uh, is, is not well studied or there are very few people with the same visual disability I have, therefore there, there have not been any, uh, you know, cures or ways to really kind of improve it. So had I listened to my uh, family who said, you know what, you need to uh, study something else, something that requires less work, uh, I would not, I, I don't think I'll be as satisfied. I am very passionate, uh, passionate about what I'm studying. I love reading. I just am um, constantly consuming uh, different information. Uh, I take it on my own pace, uh, but uh, as far as uh, you know, what I would say to any students who um, encounter the same challenges we do and feel stuck, just uh, even if a lot of uh, people around you are not as encouraging, just there's always that one person. So just uh, follow your heart and uh, uh, stick with people who, you know, support you and uh, show you that that disability is kind of a challenge to kind of force you to find a different, uh, a different outlet or way to do things than everybody else. So um, in the jobs I've had or in schools, in school so far, like even my professors or my employers, I, I feel like they always uh, tell me that I've done a superb work compared to others. Even though I take a little bit of time, I feel like I compensate for that for making sure that I do a super good job <laughs> than everybody else. So it's just um, just it's just doing things a little bit different. It's not really, it, it can be discouraging, um, uh, feeling like you're different or you don't have, a, you're not as sharp as everyone else. But it, that's not the case uh, from what I've discovered. It's just that you have uh, you you need to do things uh, differently than everybody else, and it's just uh, more. Uh, it kind of forces us to be more creative, or forces us to just not do a lazy work. Just because we have that time to compensate for, we just want to make sure that whatever we do or our work, for instance, assignments, like really blows our professors' minds. Like when I'm writing my papers, I just make sure that it, it, it's so, I make sure that it, I show my professor something different. Like I even make sure that I collaborate with my, uh, uh, my peers to ensure that even if I have a d the same perspective, I just want to make sure that it's a little bit superior. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just, a, it, it's not a barrier, it's just a, I think an opportunity to just be different from everybody else. So there's any, anything cool about being the same as everybody else anyway, so. <laughs> so just follow your heart and stick with people who want what's best for you and you know, just do whatever you want to do, whatever makes you happy. As a student with a physical disability, I think I speak for all students that have a physical disability and go to the university when I say that going to the university is hard, like physically, like the physical, like the barriers, you know? I have to walk the whole school and they tell me, why don't you get a wheelchair? I'm like, heck no, man. 
I don't want to gain weight with the winter. Like, no, and, yeah. like I'm just gonna. I'm already tight as it is, and my legs are already super tight. So why get a wheelchair and make them tighter? You know, but like, like the like the doors. You know, to open the doors for me, it's hard. Like, like I have to push. Like I I, I open them right, but sometimes they're they're super heavy. But they, they help me. You know, like other people, they see me struggle and they help me. And everyone, well, mostly everyone in the university, everyone that I met so far is pretty accepting and super nice to me. So they, they tend to help me out a lot. And so like, I, I don't know, like you know, like you, you, like you, you struggle with like going around the university, but like you wanna do more, you know? Your disability doesn't define you, you wanna, be someone better. You want to be the best person you can be, and prove to everyone, like that you can do what everybody else can do, or even better. You know. I have two brothers. One's a lawyer. The other one is the emergency room doctor. And if they can be that, I can be anything. In eighth grade, I played football. I also played the French horn in middle school and high school. And so I said, hey, I can do anything. So even though it may take me a little bit more time to test than certain projects, hey, I can do anything. And that's what I, that's what I go forward doing. That actually segued right into the next question. The um, when did you uh, realize that you were going to be successful in college? Because I know we all have discussed how scary it is, and I remember how scary it was, and didn't think I was going to make it. In fact, nobody thought I was going to make it. Right? But that's a whole other story. So, at what point? What happened in your life, either here or there or wherever, that you said, you know? I'm going to be successful at this. I can do this. This is going to happen. And then where do you want to be in 10 years? What's your uh, long-term goal? My first year of college was a really big struggle for me. Um, like I had mentioned before, one of my major professors that really helped me through all of this was Jovan Delgado. And she's actually a professor at STC full-time. And she convinced me that STC might be a better approach for me rather than starting off here at a university. So um, they have a really big deaf-friendly community there. There's so many more deaf students compared to here. So I went ahead and I transferred to STC. And it was scary to do that. I felt like I was going from a big university to a small community college. And I kind of felt like, oh, I'm making a mistake. But the more I continued to go and the further I got along in that college career, it actually became a lot easier for me um, once I got the hang of the sign language, which I understood more of deaf culture and deaf community, and I started to become more accepting of who I was. I graduated with my associate's degree, and I feel like when I graduated from my associate's degree, then I felt like, why not try to pursue something more? Why not go and pursue my bachelor's. And as far as I know, I'm the only person from my class um, that specialized in either the ITP or the DSS program that's actually continuing to pursue a bachelor's degree here at the university. And when I was able to accomplish that and achieve that, I felt like, hey, why not You know, try and finish my bachelor's degree? So coming here back at UTRGB and it honestly feels like a breeze compared to my first year. <laughs> I felt like I was so scared to transfer back for nothing because I'm flourishing here the same way I did at STC. So I honestly feel like that stepping stone of transferring to STC is what made me realize that I can accomplish so much more than what I already have. Um, as far as for my 10 year goal for employment, um, I'm hoping to finish my bachelor's degree, and after I finish my bachelor's degree, I do want to pursue a master's program. I'm contemplating if I want to pursue a master's degree in occupational therapy, but I think I'm more so leaning towards deaf education. And after I finish my master's, I definitely want to do a PhD. 
program. So after I do that, I'm hoping that will take under 10 years for me to do. <laughs> um, I really want to come back to the Valley and I really want to, you know, serve the regional day schools for the deaf. I feel like there's a lot of different changes that are going on in there and there's a lot of people approving them, a lot of people disapproving them, but I definitely want to help, you know, break some of the different stereotypes and different barriers that deaf students experience while they're, you know, in public school systems as well as you know, charter school systems, because I myself went to a charter school. Um, I was the only deaf student. Um, it was very difficult. Nobody understood the things that I went through. I've had, you know, teachers refuse to follow my accommodations. I've had, and you know, when the different um, authorities would bring it up to them, they would say, well, I didn't ask to have a deaf student. And it's like, well, I didn't ask for your negativity. <laughs> but I definitely want to break that struggle that people have and break that stigma that a lot of people confuse that deaf is dumb, which is not the case because here I am in college, <laughs> I'm pursuing a degree. There's numerous deaf people that have higher educations, have degrees, um, Dr. Saladin, for example. <laughs> and I definitely want to break that stigma that is often showed. Um, it's really shown here in the Valley. I know a lot of deaf people are try to be raised hearing and I think that's something that I definitely want to try to change and try to accomplish and I'm hoping that's something that I can do. Coming from a, a country that uh, which that, ha that doesn't have a lot of educated people and you know the educational system is not very uh, good. A lot of people are not educated. So uh, coming here and getting being exposed to different opportunities and even uh, developing visual disabilities and uh, just uh, overcoming that and finding uh, different avenues for me to make uh, the system work for me and ensuring that I I, I just I succeed just as everybody else. I just um, now feel like I can do anything. I feel uh, powerful just because uh, when I was asked by my eye doctor and my family to to quit and drop out of college or do something else, uh, I just I just knowing that I pushed through and not having a whole lot of support system and uh, now being in graduate school and doing so well, I just know that I can do anything and I am going to reach my goals. Now, um, I initially uh, had considered law school and that was my goal for a very long time, which I can do, but I just, uh, having been exposed to different ideologies and different uh, uh, opportunities uh, right now, that's not the best option for me, I feel, uh, in order for me to accomplish what I want to do and enjoy whatever field I do. I'm now uh, considering or kind of examining different uh, political f fields in what I'm interested in and uh, looking into like NGO. So in less than two, uh, uh, two years, I should be done with my graduate school and thereafter I should be um, getting my PhD, which shouldn't take more than two years. So in 10 years, I do. <laughs> I have not thought that far long, but I'm just exploring my options as I go. And uh, I know that in, that in 10 years, for sure, I'll be established in a uh, field that I very much enjoy. Right now, I'm very um, uh, interested in looking into um, any uh, kind of research that would allow me to travel around because I already have friends who do this kind of work. Uh, Notre Dame have traveled in different countries. So like having those connections and just it kind of invokes different things and challenges whatever uh, goals, established goals that I think I have. So right now I'm 
like oh there's so much there's so much to do <laughs> so i i want to take my time and figure that out but for sure right now i I think in 10 years I will have a, a career that allows me to do research work or maybe NGO and travel a lot around, get exposed to different cultures, different experiences. Uh, it's just super exciting um, and just I do hope that you all understand and really uh, pat yourself on the back and realize that you're helping us, uh, people who could just easily give up and be like, hey, I can't do this. I, you know, I have this obstacle. I just, I'm not cut out for it. But you just give us resources and kind of, you know, it's, it, it's like, hey, you, you have this option. If you give up, like, you're going to blame yourself. So I do hope that you know what impact you're making on people like ourselves. The first time I, that I realized that I could actually succeed in college was when I took um, summer school, like right after high school, like two weeks after I graduated. <laughs> I took it at STC and I took college algebra. and. My parents actually told me, be careful because you might fail and don't get disappointed if you fail. <laughs> like, you're going to fail. That's basically what they said. <laughs> and I'm like, that's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when I was there, I saw like a lot of people drop, like a lot. And I was still there and I got an A. And I was like, oh my god. So that's when I realized that I could succeed especially at UTRGV. So after the first semester, when I got the thesis, I'm like, okay, I did succeed. I think I, I'm gonna do better, right? Like, I'll keep going, you know? But like, as far as my, what I wanna do in 10 years, I wanted to be a child psychologist, but now think about it, that's not gonna make me happy. It will give me money, right? But <laughs> it won't, <laughs> like a lot of money. Like, I'll, I'll be happy because I have money, right? <laughs> but my life, like, my soul won't be happy. So I, I want to be a teacher, you know, a high school teacher, to be more specific. Specifically where, where I graduated from. Like, because, like, you know, I, I feel happy there, you know? Like, I feel happy here at UTRG too. Like, it's awesome. I have more freedom. But, you know, like, I, I feel like a teacher, I can make a difference. And I also want to get my master's degree in, clin in clinical psychology. So I'm getting ready for that. Like, I'm already starting to study for that GRA and everything. But it's still kind of too soon, so I don't want to stress out. <laughs> 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 and then once I write my, my thesis or, or like, you know, my, my book for the master's degree, I want to get my doctor's degree because I want to make my parents proud. My dad, he, he like wants me to get the doctor's degree. He's like, get a doctor's degree. You can teach at the school. Like, like you can, like you can teach, but you can also become the principal. You know, boss everybody around. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll do, I'll do that. <laughs> but I don't know. But those are my goals. Well. Taking advanced classes, like advanced math classes and things like that, it's amazing to see about half the kids drop the class. And so I would say that's really my, I can do this moment. And so probably in 10 years from now, I, well, not really 10 years, but in, I plan to graduate in about uh, 2020 spring. And so I plan to move to Houston and because both my brothers are there and a whole bunch of my, my family live there and live there. <laughs> and so I just, and work there because a bunch of the government jobs like uh, FBI and stuff are looking for jobs 
in computer science to prevent people from hacking into their websites or hacking into websites like that. So that's what I plan to do. So. I'd just like to say that um, when you all finish your degrees and all that, come work for us. <laughs> you know? uh, we need computer science, we need the people to teach, we need people to write policies, we need people to teach the deaf, and we need, we need it all. Okay? And you're the kind of people we want working here. Okay? I have to go, but before we go, let's have another round of applause for the panel. Mm -hmm. And I need to turn it over to Tanya, and I've got to run. Thank you all for being here. I know you have to run. I have a quick little certificate, though, okay. to thank you for your participation today. But more than that, also for your advocacy for people with disabilities, and especially our students here at the university. So thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> As you know, we have pizza waiting in the back. I hope it's still warm. But again, I want to sincerely thank our students for being here today and sharing their experiences I'm always in awe of their accomplishments and especially these students who are able to be here today and to share them with all of us. So please help me give them another round of applause to thank them. Thank you.